At this time, Marcel is meeting with Susie, who was recommended to him by Besson as she will not be in the country for a few weeks due to a professional seminar. Susie also works at the clinic and has a co-op student who will be observing the session with Marcel with his permission. And today we have uh, Marcel Walters coming in. He um, is a member of the LGBT community. He's been going through um, a particular situation. He is struggling with um, homelessness and addiction. So we're just taking over from Bassant for the month that she's away at the conference. So I just want you to observe and take any notes and we can discuss um, the situation after. But I am going to have to ask permission for you to be in the session and if he agrees, then we can go from there, okay? Okay. So I just wanted to ask your permission if it's okay if um, she can sit in today on the session. She is a student um, at Sheridan College and she's doing her practicum and all the, um, <coughs> all the confidentiality applies. So any confidentiality we go through today would also apply to her. So nothing you say here leaves the agency. No, okay, sure. As right. long as nothing I say is gonna leave here. Okay, perfect. So I know you probably went over one of these with Bassant already, but because um, this is a new session with me, this is just the confidentiality agreement. So the only reasons, again, why I would be able to break confidentiality um, would be harm to self, harm to others, um, to any minors under the age of 16, um, any abuse or sexual contact with them, and any subpoena due to court order, okay? So if you just want to go over this again, um, basically says the same thing, and then sign whenever you're ready, okay? Okay, so i got to reread this again and sign it again. Um, I would suggest that you just read it again and then just sign it again for our purposes um, but if you are familiar and you're and you remember uh, what it says and you're comfortable with the information then you can go ahead and sign it but I definitely do suggest you read anything that you sign. All right. Okay so I'll be right back. I'm just going to debrief with the for a moment. Okay. Just to confirm, you said that both you guys have followers as well? Yes, we both follow um, the confidentiality outlined in the agreement. So even if any time through the process you feel uncomfortable, just uh, let me know and we can send um, Leanne out of the room. And we just want to make sure that you're as comfortable as possible within this situation. Okay. And we're just really grateful that you would help her out with her learning so that she can be able to help other people in the community as well. Okay. So was there anything in particular you wanted to discuss today? Uh, yeah, they, me and um, <coughs> Basant had talked about getting home with my legal stuff that I have to do with. Yes. Okay, so I did go over Basant's notes and there um, was an issue with some um, checks that you had uh, signed that had bounced. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. and um, you wanted to get in contact with Legal Aid, correct? Yeah. Okay. So um, we can definitely go into that. I can give you um, a contact information for a lawyer from Legal Aid okay. after the session is done. Uh, yeah. Is it free? Or? Yes, Legal Aid is free. Okay. So um, yeah, so it should be it should be fine, and it'll be of no cost to you. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So how are you doing today? I'm doing better. Um, you know, I've been off the streets for a little bit. I'm kind of starting to get a little acclimated to that new shelter that uh, you guys let me go into. It is, it's not the best of situations, mm -hmm. uh, but it's it's better than where I was. So yeah. I'm kind of feeling That's okay about that. That's good. Um, have you considered any like other employment opportunities? Have you had an opportunity to look for any jobs or anything like that? I know that they do have a computer there that uh, you can use. No, I haven't looked at Okay, so we can set you up some res with some resources for that as well before okay. today's meeting is over. Have you thought of anything that you might want to do that you're interested in? Um, really, to me, I was trying to get into like some music stuff, but it doesn't really matter. I, I just need to get some work to, to you know, be able to support myself. Yeah. So even maybe um, if you wanted to try applying at any music stores or that sell um, instruments or even like that sell CDs and DVDs because then at least you'll be in that um, environment and you'll be surrounded by your goal. So you can definitely look into that. Uh, I kind of don't have a resume at the moment, so um, can I get some help with writing one up? Yeah, for sure, 100%. Um, I know at the shelter they do have a program um, where they go through uh, resume skills with you, interview skills, and they will set you up with proper attire for going through your interview. They just basically set you up um, for success. So um, you can definitely uh, contact the shelter together if you want to and uh, ask them to look into those resources for you and set up a meeting so that that can get done for you. Okay. Yeah, that works. Oh, the good. sooner the better, really. I need to really make some money. Yeah. No, I understand. Like you want to get things get things moving while you have a momentum, which is really great. Yeah. You. I know that last time you were here, you spoke with the son about your father. Did you want to go into any more detail about that? Is that something you're comfortable talking about today? Yeah. Sure. Oh. Um. Like, should we, where do I begin? Well, you feel well, when I was um, still living with my parents, my mom was still alive, I had told Sant that um, they used to, well, my mom used to like beat me up a little bit. Mm -hmm. She used to like really try and punish me because I was acting like bad or something, but I wasn't really doing much. <laughs> they just wanted to find a reason. Yeah. And then my pops used to do the same thing. Um, he used to beat me day in, day out. And then uh, one time when I was nine, he um, came into my room in the middle of the night. And um, at the time, I didn't really know what was going on. And now that I'm older, I yeah. kind of get it. He uh, used to touch me. So earlier, um, you said that you felt like this was supposed to be happening to you. Why did you, uh, why did you say that? Kind of felt like my fault, you know, like, maybe if I was a better kid and I, and my dad didn't think I was that like gay, maybe this stuff wouldn't be happening. I can see where you're coming from with that line of thinking, especially as a young person and not having, um, you know, gone through and resolved the issue. But I just want you to know that when things like that happen, it's never, um, it's never your fault. So we can have these sessions to just work through that and come to a resolution that feels comfortable for you. Okay. So, and you also said that um, maybe your father thought that you were gay and that's why continued on with um, the abuse. 
Um, how has that played a role in the relationship with you and your father and how do you currently see yourself today? Well, I don't really have any sort of relationship with my father. I haven't spoken to him, seen him since. He actually, I think he lives maybe like 15 minutes away from me. Mm -hmm. And I just, I have no feeling to want to go see him or anything like that. Yeah. And um, I think from how that affected me now is basically it got me into the field I'm in. Like, yeah. I didn't know what to do. Like, for to make money, once it kicked me out, so I did what I needed to do. Yeah. And I've always felt, you know, kind of different in terms of how my how I feel about other other people, like men and women. It's just, yeah. I just, I didn't feel bad about doing that stuff. Okay. So to address the first portion, I think what might be helpful um, in just reconciling some of the feelings you have towards your father would be to maybe write a letter to him, even if you never send it. Write a letter as if you were going to send it, as if you know he was going to receive it. Write out all your feelings, all your emotions about what happened through the past, what you've been doing, and how now, even though all these things have happened to you in your life, how that you have managed to overcome them and you're setting yourself on the path for success. I think it's a really great exercise to do and you can choose to send it if you want to. Um, you can just release it so you can burn it, you can crumple it up, you can do whatever you want with it, but you can keep it with you as a keepsake to look back on afterwards if you so choose, but it's just a good way to get your um, feelings and emotions out um, about how you feel about your father, and even too, if you'd like to write one to your mother and your sister. Yeah. <laughs> so, you want me to write one to my mom? Yeah, you could definitely, you could definitely write one to your mom. You could take it to her grave if you wanted to, or you can. Um, sometimes other clients in the past um, tear it up and put it in the ocean, or you know something like that to give a freedom a feeling of freedom and release of the of the past. Okay. Might might have to try that. Yeah, so it's just like symbolic. If it's easier for you, maybe start with the start with the one um, for your mother and then, you know, try and reconcile that relationship within yourself and then that within yourself if you can. Okay. I'll try now. So there's an exercise that I wanted to do with you. This is a critical events timeline. So um, I just want you to go through your history up until now, highlighting the most important events in your life that stood out to you and around the years or the ages or time period that it happened or took place. And um, this will just help us be able to get, uh, or help me get a better understanding of what events stand out the most to you in your life and um, what we want to tackle right away. So, like, what do you mean, like the day I was born and so? stuff? Yeah, so we could start from there. So if you, we'll just do a timeline like that and then we can start with birth. So you would just go through and do your, um, just write your date of birth, anything that stands out to you, special birthdays, any like um, traumatizing events, like the history between you and your father, um, anything amazing that happened to you, anything, anything like that. Okay. So like my birthday, March nine. That's probably like my fifth birthday. What happened on your fifth birthday? I my mom got me this nice bike, like. It was really tiny, but I, like it was my first ever like nice gift I ever got. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah, that's really good. Write that down. Um, is it just positive stuff? Anything that stands out to you, positive, 
negative, maybe even something that you feel that's insignificant but it stands out to you like I stubbed my toe and it hurt really bad or something like that but for some reason that stands out and you remember it. Okay. Yes, my seventh birthday. Started listening to uh, like old school jazz and stuff. Kind of got me interested in the music. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Hmm. It was ten. My mom beat me. And then I was uh about thirteen years old. My mom's dead. So, I guess that's important. Mm -hmm. It's not 13, I'm talking about. Same year, I get kicked out the house. seemed like a very rough year for you. Was there anything in there that was good that you can maybe remember, like a good memory from that year? Just when I met Candy. Yeah, and basically yeah. the only positive. Yeah, from going over um, the son's notes earlier, I do see that um, she's been a really important figure in your life. Sixteen. I did. I started like really getting into the life, and that's when I first met. Dude, his name is Jerome. He's my. on years I've been just doing God knows what and it's only till now just 21 I came to see you guys mm -hmm. that's basically it I noticed when you mentioned Jerome you were very uh, reluctant and you know you seemed kind of like that was something that you didn't want to mention because um, he, he had told me never mention his name never mentioned his name or something's gonna happen. So for you, is there still some fear around that even though you're in the shelter now and you know, you're know you safe? Yeah, because I'm still afraid that he'll, he'll find me and I'll mm -hmm. do what he said. Yeah. Basically, end me saying his name. Would you ever want to talk to the um, police about Jerome or anything like that? I know that may be a difficult step for you, but if you know this is something, if this is this is a very real fear for you, that might be a good option to even just think about. I don't know. I think that might make it worse. Like, I'm um, really. The only one that knows, like his real name, mm -hmm. goes by another name. But I'm afraid that if I was to do that, he'll 
Find me a company. I just I don't I don't do that. I would rather just just cut ties from that and, and I don't want to get me in trouble and I don't want to deal with the situation of what could happen. Okay. Yeah, I can definitely um, understand that. Okay, so um, was there anything else that you wanted to discuss um, for today's session? Anything you wanted to go in to more depth with or um, yeah, like I remember I, when I was talking to Basan, she was going to tell me, like, help me with Louisa, trying to get in contact with my sister. Okay. So we can, like, talk. Okay. But I, I did tell her I didn't want to see her yet, because I wasn't, mm -hmm. I don't feel like I'm prepared to do that, to see her face to face. Yeah. So. Do you have um, any friends who might know your sister? Do you know where your sister lives, or? Sister lives, um, she kind of lives out, she doesn't live here, she lives out the country. Okay. So what we can, yeah, what we can do is maybe we could try and do some research to try and find her. Okay, so if there's um, if there's any way to get in touch with her, we will get in touch with her and get that number for you. And uh, hopefully, maybe you'll be able to start a conversation with her and get on the road to healing. I'm hoping so, because um, some people that I know that know her. Like, they told me, like, she recently had a kid, and I'd like to, you know, get to talk to that kid and talk to her and be a part of her lives again, but not until I can get my stuff together. And yeah, it does seem like a family connection is important for you, so that is definitely something we want to build on and giving you a stronger support system. Okay. So, um, at the front desk, um, the front desk personnel will give you a card for uh, legal aid. Um, I also want to show you this. Um, we call it a culture gram. I'm just going to give you a little bit of homework along with those letters that we discussed earlier. So basically it has these headings here. So under the headings or beside them, I just want you to um, fill in whatever comes to mind in these um, categories. So time in your community, whatever community that is for you, whether it be the LGBT community, um, the community of people you met while you were working on the streets, um, while you were living on the streets, anything like that. Um, just fill it in here and um, bring it back to me and we can discuss it in our next session, okay? Okay. All right. And well, I have one question. Mm -hmm. My sister ready for like... Like values of ed education and work, since I don't have them. Well, you do have some education, right? Like you went to elementary school. Yeah. And that's you, an, that's enough to write about. Them. Well, you can write down your your education so far. Any education goals that you may have, um, whether it is uh, finishing high school or getting your GED, going to college or university, whatever goals you might have that you wanna aspire to, taking a skill trade. Um, anything like that, and then we can go through and discuss um, options for you as well. Okay. Okay. All right, so we're done today's session, but it was really nice um, speaking with you, and thank you for allowing our student to be in on the session today. We really appreciate that. Okay. All right, have a great day, Marcel.